Could you briefly summarize what your work is about, the work for which you won the ACM prize? So there's a class of uh, problems in uh, computer science called NP-hard problems or NP-complete problems, and uh, for which we know that we are unlikely to have uh, any efficient algorithms, assuming p is not equal to np, which is a famous mathematical conjecture. So uh, a natural question that arose after that discovery was whether you could compute approximate solutions to these problems. And uh, uh, in my work, I've, uh, uh, I and my co-author showed that uh, computing even approximate solutions is NP-hard also for many of these NP-hard problems. So even approximate solutions may not be possible. Um, and then I also did some work uh, showing for some of those problems, there are reasonable approximate solutions that you can compute. And, uh, yeah. and you mentioned before we started the interview that you're, you're now more interested or you're, you've gotten into machine learning, was it? Yes. And what is your work uh, regarding machine learning in particular? So machine learning currently, uh, for the last few years, uh, has uh, involved uh, computational problems that uh, also appear to be NP-hard and intractable, but somehow we can solve quite well, quite fast, uh, at very large scale. And that's a big mystery. So that's what got me interested in machine learning originally. But now I'm interested in a broad swath of questions, understanding deep nets and other uh, models that are being studied uh, in recent years. And uh, this new interest, the, the development of the interest from your earlier research, was that made possible by new discoveries or was it just sort of a natural switch for you? Uh, it was a natural switch, yes. Um, um, yeah, I was uh, intrigued that such seemingly intractable problems could be solved at such large scale uh, in, in a variety of uh, applications. So that's what got me interested in machine learning. Mm -hmm. I'd like to go back a little bit since the HLF is so much about people starting their careers and um, find out sort of what led you up to the point where you led the, where, where you won the prize, where you were awarded the prize, and uh, what mentors and what examples you followed, uh, who was especially influential on you? Um, so yes, I, I, I think anybody who uh, succeeds usually has a lot of mentors, so it's um, it probably wouldn't be fair to just single out one person, but uh, at every stage in life, uh, from high school to undergrad, I, I was an undergrad in two different institutions, yeah, but many faculty in those places who were, uh, I would say at least four or five, who were quite influential and uh, encouraging, and, uh, and then in grad school, uh, my advisors, yeah, um, and also as a faculty member, yeah, colleagues at Princeton where I was faculty or at other universities, and yeah, so I think the total number of people would be at least 10 or 15 or, or more. I mean, there are so many people who are very supportive and, and give good guidance. Are there any particular qualities that you think made a mentor good for you? Uh, no, I, I think the um, I think the most important uh, part of getting, I mean, uh, of a mentoring relationship is just being there and uh, people who would make time in their busy lives to to listen to whatever question I had and give advice, and that they were there. I think that was probably the most important part. And your own mentorship style, since you're now teaching uh, students, I assume mostly un mostly graduate students? Uh, mostly grad, but a few undergrads every year, yes. And how do you approach that? Uh, so I can maybe describe the research style first. Uh, my research style is that I'm uh, often interested in doing new things, figuring out new things that I new areas that I d uh, did not know before. And I think that's a big plus for the grad students because I'm not an expert either. And so we are on an equal footing and uh, often they, you know, 
they figure out things which I didn't know and I think maybe that's very empowering. Do you see much difference between uh, when you were a student and the students who are now in school? Uh, as far as environment and what they're studying and uh, the challenges they may have? Uh, no, I wouldn't say there's a big difference in the students, but there's a big difference in the environment they are in. So uh, there's archive and YouTube and social media. And uh, I think they have many more ways of uh, keeping track of what's going on in the field than we did way back. Uh, the pace is faster too. So, uh, so I think that's the biggest change. Mm -hmm. So going on to the HLF, because of course this is also a mentorship um, situation, is this your first one? This is my first one. Do you have any expectations or hopes or fears even <laughs> from this week? Um, no, I just came with an open mind. Yeah, I've never been here. People have spoken very highly of it, so I'm looking forward to it. Are there any of the other laureates who you haven't met who you're, you're looking forward to perhaps? Yeah, probably many of the laureates I haven't met before, yeah. I would say maybe two thirds at least, yeah. In your own field, and as we, we discussed, machine learning is of course a very, a very active field at the moment. What do you think um, is the most exciting area at the moment? So I think the most exciting area is that uh, people are able to, uh, to train very vast models based on large amounts of data uh, effectively. And uh, so, yeah, the exciting thing is that that seems to be possible. And then the more exciting thing is to figure out how to leverage that, because there are many situations out there where we cannot leverage that so far. Uh, and, and finally, something that I'm personally very interested in is to understand these large models, you know, how and why can we train them. Any particular, any particular area of a uh, large data model that, that's Oh, I, I'm, I'm referring to deep learning, yeah, that's, mm -hmm. what, yeah, that's what I meant. That's For any particular thing. application, though? Um, I'm interested broadly. Uh, uh, I'm quite interested in natural language processing as an application area. Yeah. Uh, is there anything else that you'd like to say about, uh, about your time here or your award or your studies? Mm. Yeah, I guess um, um, what, I, what I've learned in my career is that uh, you can't go in with a preset expectation of what you're going to do and uh, be flexible and open to working on new things. And often that's where the action is, not because often you don't have as a student or uh, or, or actually in any stage of life, you don't really have full information. So if you go in with a preconceived notion of what you're going to work on for the next five years, uh, maybe that works in mathematics, but in computer science, I think that's usually not a good strategy. So you have to be open to work on new, new things, new challenges. It's funny that that echoes also your statement about what you expect from this week, that you go in with an open mind. Really yeah, good. yeah, I'm definitely of that uh, character, yeah. <laughs> well, thank you very much. <laughs>